So then I'll stand over here closer to the computer. So to get things in the right space in a mix, at our disposal we have, let's go through those things again. The most important basic one is level. <laughs> okay, and then we have EQ. We have the envelope, which we will call compression, right? We have reverb and delay. We have pan. I don't know why I'm holding my arm up for so long. <laughs> and we have uh, um, modulation. Guess what? These are the same things you have when you mix. So when you said getting them in their spaces, I was like, oh, you mean to mix? Because that is literally what we're doing. So uh, level's pretty basic, but, it, but we found when we do the, did this mix that a lot of things sounded really similar, right? Especially when we had the accompaniment person there. Plays I really heard is this, the accompaniment guy played the same djembe that Dramon did. They had two different mics, the 149 and the 251, but those mics were so similar, those two things sounded really the same to me. It was very hard to tell. So, so level we have EQ when, we're, when we work with live instruments like this. If you're going to EQ the heck out of it, why even have that microphone or that thing, right? You should have picked a different mic probably. So we want to try to avoid EQ until we really need it. Until we really need it okay? Envelope is affected by the microphone you pick, right? And by compression. Uh, reverb and delay, this is the other thing that's going to set it in space, right? It's going to set it in that third dimension. Right? For not left and right, not low and high frequency, but back. Right? back. So this is a really important one, too. Modulation, uh, we'll, we probably won't be able to do that much with these percussion sounds, but I actually did play around with it a little bit on the jazz quartet mix, and I'll just show you what that sounded like today. It sounded like crap, but it certainly achieved one thing that I was trying to do, but it may cause other problems. And of course, every one of these you do causes a problem. Right? So if we come over to the balaphone. I am going to now play for you. I'm going to A B the balaphone that is on the 149, and then I'm going to A B or I'm going to A the balaphone on one of them, and B. God, I cannot talk here. One of these playbacks is going to be the 149. The other one's going to be the 121. You ever know what I'm talking about when I talk about those two mics? Can you believe? Would you have believed a year ago that you'd be just throwing out mic? Numbers like that? 421, 121, 122. Yeah. And you know what they mean now, right? That's, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Might take me a second to kind of get it all leveled. Why is it so quiet? What's going on here? Okay, this is Mike A. Oh, here, I can turn it up right here. No, I can't. This again. Here's Mike B. Sorry, different levels. Let me keep, let me, let me wait till we get the same level here. <laughs> then there's that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh dear, I'm totally going to screw up my mix here. <laughs> Hang on one second. It's okay. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, okay. 
Here we go. Okay, good. Nice. All right, let me just get these levels now. Okay, here's my K. Listen to the high frequency. Listen to the low frequency. The relationship between these things. Mic two. Same performance, right? So you have to listen as an engineer now. It's funny, right? At first you're like, wait, it's the same. But hopefully by now you're starting to hear some things that are different. Listen to the attack. Listen to the sustain. Listen to the high. This one, listen to the mid. Listen to the low. Switch back. Here's A again. B. Here's A again. The condenser microphone is right there. Do you think it's A? Which, which would the condenser mic? Do you think the condenser mic is A? Raise your hand. You think you can answer mic is B, raise your hand. Okay, the ribbon mic is B. Oh, yes. 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 Yes, I agree. So let me play it. Like, so for me, I totally use the ribbon mic on the balafone for the one take. We didn't have it in the first one, but the second one, I'm like, bang. Yeah, that's not good. So here it is again. Here's A. And here's B. They're totally different, right? It's funny now that now now when you yeah. A. B. You have this file. You can sit and listen to this a million times. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the first time I'm back to like, ribbon like absolutely, like, absolutely. Like, absolutely. What I was doing in the morning. Like, I wish I had a lead or a connect, though. Just like a dynamic mic on there, too. I'd be really curious what it happened. I, I think the ribbons work really well there because you can hear the, the, the sustain of the thing. It's not getting blown out by that fast transient. The sustain is probably the same on the two. I just can't turn the M149 up loud enough for the sustain to be the same because the transient would be so piercing at that point. The transient is so much higher. Oops, I erased those. The transient is so much higher than that. Okay. Now, let's say we have... Maybe I can just undo what I did. No, oh, I can revert here. Let me do that. Oh, I was playing around with this this morning. Let's say we have a take where we do only have the M149, and we know it's too clicky and too much transient, too much 
condenser sound. What do we do? How do we fix that problem? Compression. Compression. And what sort of things? Someone besides River? Uh, what do we want to be doing with that compression? Fast attack. A fast attack. Fast enough that what? That you can get rid of the. You can dull out the. Okay. Does that make sense? Should we try it just a little bit? Okay. Okay. So let me. Uh, Got to remember to turn down the volume and then hit play. Okay, so there's the clicky sound, right? Who wants to come up and uh, fix the spot? It took me about an hour before I got it. So what does he need to do with his threshold? Bring it up all the way to like negative 20, 30 maybe. Is that negative 25? Bring it up. Oh wait, he's at 30? Crank it down yeah. to like 50. Oh, yeah. Just so you can like... Okay, so he needs to bring down. that down. I don't know about 60 right? And what should he do with his ratio? He's doing something you just 8 to 12 this. maybe? Crank it all the way up. I don't all the way. <laughs> that, you're going to hear. What should he do with his other knobs before he even hits play? Fast attack. Drag that attack as fast as you can. No, that's no. Oh, that's not so, right? What about the knee knob? Oh, probably a hard knee. Bring it. We want a hard knee. What does that mean? It's going to go. Someone besides you two. Sorry, what is a hard knee on the compressor? Hard thing. Press one. David? It's like it's, it's All I can think is that sounds incredibly close so to like, the curve. <laughs> <laughs> you think of like a hard knee? Does that? How fast? How fast what? It's going to make closeness or. Not closeness, but like. Is that your tail? So attack time is what? 
initial kind of music. Like, from the time up to the. Yeah, I just. Not quite. Not quite. It's more than a way. Yeah. Horizontal. Lynn attacks it. Oh, yeah, okay. Until it, get, so it gets to the peak. How long does the, the attack is after the sound starts? I want you guys to memorize this. I want to never say it again. Okay? There is no reason for you to leave this problem and not really understand this. The attack is after the sound crosses the threshold, right? Because that's what a compressor has, a threshold. After the sound cro crosses the threshold, how long before the compressor turns on. Does that make sense? Yes. But that's only... Um, that's the attack. But that's only in the context of uh, compression. She's a lot of attack. What do you mean, like a synthesizer? No, I mean, in real life. You will still have an attack. Right? Right? They would be attacked walking down the street. No, but when they're hitting the drums, they're hitting the drums. There's a tap on that. There's no compressor. So the thing is, the definition is going to be a compressor. Okay, so that's it. That is what we're talking about right now. I'm loving this word. So, the attack is how long it takes for the compressor to turn on after the threshold is crossed. If any of you leave here and don't know that, I'm going to disown you. I'm going to say, I don't remember. I don't remember Sean. Who? What? Yeah, I'm not taking my class. Preston, was the attack? After sound cross the threshold, how long before the compressor turned on? Got it. Knee is how fast it turns on. Well, I'm sorry. Let me stop there. Then go back to ratio is how much compression it will apply once it's on. So if the sound is at eight, if it's a ratio of eight to one and the sound went 16 decibels over, when the compressor kicks on, now it's only going to allow it to go two decibels over. 16 divided by eight. Can you repeat ratio again? Yes. Ratio is how much it's going to compress. How much is going to turn down the sound when it goes over the threshold? Oh. 10 to one means for every 10 decibels you go over the threshold, it's going to cramp it down to only one decibel. So if you go 9 decibels over, now it's only going to go 0.9 or 10. Ratio of 2 to 1. Let's see if I have a ratio of 2 to 1 and my sound goes over the threshold by 8 decibels. How loud does it allow it to go? 4. It was a meek 4. It was a meek 4, but it was right. Got it? I have a question. It's a 3 to 1 ratio. And it goes over about nine decibels. How many decibels does the compressor let the sound go over? Three. Got it? Are you still by this? However many decibels go over by the ratio. Yes? Everyone have that? So for all Actually, of them? We should just rename this class compression. So for <laughs> all the numbers, like for five, Todd might be five to one? Five to one. Five okay. to one. Okay. Five to one. Okay. So if we went over 10 decibels, it would only actually, the sound wants to go over 10 decibels, the compressor only lets it go over 10. So, when does it start attacking? I'm sorry, when does it get activated? It's probably threshold. How long does it take to start attacking? And when it attacks, how much is it going to turn it down? Threshold is when does it turn, when, the, the point at which you're going to have the compressor be activated. In terms of amplitude. Oh. So a low threshold means as soon as the sound starts, it's going to start turning on that, turn saying the compressor, you ready, wake up? Because in 10 milliseconds, you're going to have to compress at a ratio of 20. Oh, okay. You got 10 milliseconds to wake up. <laughs> Pretty quick. What was me? Ah, we haven't got here. Oh, we're okay. okay. We're okay. Me is what you fear. These are the three most, yeah. <laughs> these are the three most important settings here. George, what is threshold? Uh, just anything that goes over it is going to get the effect. It's going to activate the compressor. Yeah. Freddie, what is attack? Attack is how fast the compressor reacts. After the, what? After transient above the threshold. After the threshold is crossed. And Max, what is the ratio? The 
ratio is how much it compresses. Like, if it goes over, if it's three to one ratio and it goes over nine. So once the attack period is passed, how much, how much does it turn, how much start turning again? Got it? This is, we crossed this threshold, we've waited our 10 milliseconds. We're going to reduce it at eight to one. How fast, I know this is confusing because attack is about time too, how fast do we get to that eight to one ratio? A hard knee says instantly. So it comes through here. Set this to 10 milliseconds. I uh, will say 15 milliseconds. Put it right in the middle. This says threshold is very low. Attack. After filling 50 milliseconds after this threshold is crossed, start compressing at a 5 to 1 ratio instantly. Got it? I'm going to switch this over to slow knee now. Slow knee is here at zero. This says, once you've crossed the threshold, wait 50 milliseconds, turn the level down at a 5 to 1 ratio, and when you get to it. This takes, it takes longer. Now, why this is a measure of milliseconds, I have no friggin' idea. It should be milliseconds. Okay, but really, if you think about this ratio being like a volume knob, right? Goes over five to one. I'm going to go, woo, 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 turn it down. I'm, I'm, it might, you think of a person riding the fader, right? It's obvious that they turn it down. That's what this is doing. Uh, at a five to one ratio, this would be more like a human doing it. It takes a second to hear it. Okay, this one, hard knee, is a machine doing it instantly, saying, "Hey, you went over that threshold. It's been filling 50 milliseconds. I'm turning it down at five to one." No matter what you say, right away. Hard knee. So with rate of radi ratio reduction, yeah, well, that's some yeah, kind of, like it goes from a one to one ratio to five to one. Pretty, pretty much the time, the how fast it goes from one to one because it hasn't been activated to it's five to one ratio. Now there's different things, different qualities, and different. Compressors. For example, one of the unique things about this DBX compressor and other very new ones is this is not very new, but, uh, is that some compressors will start having the harder you hit it, the, the more over the threshold you go, the faster the attack. That's why there isn't even an attack time on this one, right? You don't have an attack time. It is dynamic. It figures out, wow, you went way over there, so I'm going to give you a fast attack versus a slow attack. Which is effective in a lot of things, but uh, I found this plugin to not be effective on this drum, on this uh, African drumming ensemble, because I needed to get in there and really be able to manage those attacks. Now, to get back to knee, <laughs> I still haven't figured out how to use knee. That's all. You feel that? I still haven't figured out how to use it. I have moved that knee knob back and forth many, many times, and then like. So that you don't hear it? Like, oh, there it is, there it is. Yeah, right. okay. And then I blunt and, like, and I pick the wrong one. Half the time. Okay. So uh, I haven't gotten really good at me. I know this, that I, I tend to move it towards hard knee because I want it to kick on pretty quickly. Uh, especially I know percussive sounds, you want it to kind of quick. And I notice the effect of the compressor more. What I mean, I notice it, I can hear it, but I couldn't tell you whether it sounds better or worse, and I haven't learned how to say, listen to it in a song and say, it needs to be a softer knee. <laughs> Whereas I have, I can very much say it needs a faster attack, or a slower, slower release. Since your thought was on dealing with transient response in that microphone, would you say that turning up the knee does that? Yes, we want it to be as fast as possible when you're dealing with percussion sounds and you deal with transients. Yes. So, so in this case, direct relationship. Yes. So in this case, I would crank this bad boy up because we're trying to clamp down on that transient. Got it? But isn't that a soft knee? Yeah, that's a great question. That is probably soft knee. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, I use the ones without. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, 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 I never I used this one. Factors, like the hardest, like the, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. A good question. Let's just. Uh, 
I've been curious in this many times. Set the strength of the capacitors low and level close. So if the strength is at one, that might mean. We could listen to it and we should be able to hear it, but we would. Um, zero is no need. Zero. Hard zero is hard knee. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank you. Good question. Yeah, see, I end up using this one and this one so much I don't even worry about the knee. Okay, thank you. So, hard knee. So then if you would like the 149... Yeah, like I said, I wish it was just milliseconds, right? It's kind of like if you'd like the 149 better than the ribbon, you'd be turning off the ribbon. It's like the If you had preferred the 149 yeah, over the ribbon, you would want to turn the knee up on the 121 to try to catch it. Um, that I don't know, but I know that if we manipulate the attack and the ratio, we can be giving it. So let's come back to that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's see if we can go this direction and then we can talk about that. Okay, so, so when you're starting with a, a compressor, bring the, the threshold low, crank the ratio up, set it to the hardest knee you can if your compressor has the hard knee. And set the attack very short. Will you do that, please? So for short, would it be more to the left? Those are made in milliseconds, right? In milliseconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's a little under the threshold. There you go. Bring it all the way up. Just crank it up. There you go. Yeah. Turn your ratio way up. There you go. Now, before you hit play, what's going to happen? You actually get. You actually get. It's going to be like super quiet. No, it's not going to be quiet at all. Oh, you don't have the auto gain on. Yeah, so yeah. You want to be real careful there. If you have an auto gain on and you did that at zero, you can slow your ears down, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I would even maybe turn down the output of the makeup a little bit before you hit play. No, no, that makeup. No, makeup. Either one. Now hit play. Okay, now bring it back up. Okay, okay, so now if we, if we had an auto game on, it would have been. Yeah, don't, why don't you turn the makeup down and let's click on the negative 12 auto game just so that. There we go. Now we're going to play. Okay, so now if you turn on and off the compressor, you can hear the difference. Oh my god, can you hear it? A little cheap. Let's be quiet for a second. Maybe a first one. Okay, so let's, let's, let's stop it now. So, so the let's next. Say, so you beat it to the 121 now. What's that? Let's say you beat it to the 121 now. What? To the 121? This is the 149, right? Yes. So let's do it again comparing it to the other We can't because this is oh is this the same? Yeah, this is the might have gone to the other take. I did, there's no reason to. We can be over here in this one. Uh, we're not we're not, not quite there. I want you to be able to to dive into the sound a little bit more. So what I would usually do at this point then is to start Tweaking that attack time a little bit. Okay, so why don't you take that attack time and see if you can move very slowly from zero to about five milliseconds. See if there's any difference. And then bring it back up to zero. Yes, zero. Bring it up again. Okay, if you have problems hearing it, then we're going to do the part that Steve was talking about, which is our release is so slow here, right? The compressor is never actually turning off. Okay, so let's go ahead and shorten that release until we start seeing that needle bounce. Bring it way down. It's pretty fast. Out, you know? Okay, now that's a little too short there. So bring it just where you start to see it move around right there. Now you add a pen in the middle. Good, good. 
Now I'll try to change that attack that's even bring it up to zero so you can suck the light out. Now bring it from length in it, you go slowly up to about 50 milliseconds. On the on the attack. On the attack. Oh, I'm sorry. Take the auto button on release, sorry. There we go. See if we can uh, take that. So we have our, we have now our. What is this? What do I have? Like a mute? I've never seen this before. Why is it like that? Okay. There is our ribbon, Mike. Definitely sounds better, doesn't it? Definitely less harsh. Can I mimic that with this? This, this, uh, these are all pretty bright. I'm picking this red one because it's darker than the others. So there's my first attempt to make the condenser sound more like a ribbon. Let me switch back. Okay, let me cover the screen, see if you can tell me which one's which now. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to go ribbon, uh, condenser, compressed condenser. Okay, here's A. We'll go. What's this doing this? Let's try to okay. A. B. C. Hang on here. Something's not right. Sorry, your teacher needs to turn off. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Just ignore what just happened and we'll try it again. Okay. Here is A. Here's B. So this is, you know, I'm just going to tell you, this is between the condenser and the compressed condenser, okay? Let's see if you can hear the difference here. A and B. A. B. A. Let me, let me add just a little bit more of the effect here. Okay. A. B. A. B. Raise your hand if you can hear the difference. It's okay if you can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think? A is that uh, condensed or compressed or not? I think A is compressed. And, uh, who thinks B is compressed? Who thinks A is compressed? 
Why do you think A is compressed? Everything sounds uh, the little like I guess kind of the not ghost notes, but the lighter notes mm -hmm. sound exactly. almost equally as level as the harder hits, as the harder notes. Okay. Listen again to the sustain. See if you can if it changes your mind. Listen to the sustain and the notes. A, B. Listen to the relationship between that attack and the sustain. A again. B. Is compressor A? Who do you think compressor is A? Good, Nigel. Good job. Compressor is A. Okay. That, I just got confused at the end. You guys voted the right way the first time. <laughs> yeah. And this is stuff to practice on your own, right? I'm, you, you're not in a hot seat here. What I'm trying to show you is how to practice when you're on your own. Okay. So if you listen to this one. It sounded a lot like the rhythm to me right here. Back to my... Oh, do you hear that difference when I just did? I get excited about those stupid things that you guys are. This sounds more like the ribbon than this. Hear how harsh it is? It's got that, that click. That click's there. Okay. We're getting rid of the click by doing this. In fact, if I check the attack to zero, listen, here goes. You hear that? I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go from zero to three milliseconds. I'm going to just undo it and redo it undo it a few times, okay? See if you can hear the difference. Click. Click. Can you hear what it's doing to the envelope? Can you hear that? This is the, the, uh, the attack portion. Here I go. Press again. Sorry, I think it's wrong there. Press. Ah, sorry. It's it's doing. I was pressing the wrong buttons. That's funny. But it was still doing it. Okay, here we go. A. Here's B. Now. Back to A. B. Can you hear that difference? One of them is really harsh compared to the other, right? That is the difference between zero and three milliseconds. We're talking microscopic, like a couple waveforms in there, and our ears are picking it up, and these speakers are able to reproduce it. Okay, so that range from zero milliseconds to five milliseconds is really critical range when you're talking percussion instruments. Um. Now, what about the biggest difference, I, I'm not hearing a lot of difference. Okay, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, when I do, you, it sounds like you're trying to get rid of what's going to, the clack that comes from two pieces of wood striking each other. Yes. But these are two pieces of wood striking each other. Why do you want rid of that? These are two pieces of wood striking each other through a condenser microphone, which we all deemed earlier as a little harsh. Yeah, it didn't sound that harsh. Probably wasn't the best, what's that? It didn't sound that harsh in person. No, it didn't. No, it did not sound that harsh in person. Although the ballot folks there are a little clicky, but yeah. they weren't as clicky as this condenser mic. So the condenser mic was not the right mic. The ribbon mic was the right mic. But we got a take here where we don't have the ribbons. Okay. So we're trying to now make a condenser sound like a ribbon mic. Does that make sense? To do that, part of the, what we have to do is hack off the transient at the beginning. So I am down here, right here, Thinking. Oh, did you hear that difference? Here we go again. I'll do it again. And now. Versus. You can really hear by the time I get. To, yeah, there we go. Sorry, we heard that one finally. <laughs> that was ten mill. That was ten milliseconds. That's not that much. You usually are letting through ten milliseconds on the drum. So all these uh, envelopes on these instruments that they're playing are 
really harsh, really steep um, transit zone. That was the attack. That was the attack. So I'm just adjusting that attack. I was moving that thing. All of you were hearing it. I was moving it from here to here, and you were hearing it. Tiny microscopic movements. And it's that harsh because you used it. Yeah. So now I go back to my my ribbon. Come back to my condenser. That's almost not too bad right there. Back to my... That's about as good as I can probably do right there. Still a little brighter though, isn't it? So then, you might have to do a little bit so that's condenser sorry ribbon ribbon gets a little harsher that might be taking too much attack off so maybe I'll go to one millisecond Hear that difference? That's pretty extreme, right? Maybe a half a millisecond. Got it? So I'm trying to make a condenser sound like a ribbon. First time I've ever done that. Usually I'm trying to make ribbons sound like condensers. Does that help? So if I need to place, if I have a condenser now on the gem bay, and that balafone has a condenser on it. Those two were fighting for each other. They were battling it out. And this, the song where there was the ribbon mic on the balafone was much more helpful to be using the ribbon as opposed to the condenser. I'm just interfering with the chamber of Questions on that? <coughs> or um, when he did the overdub on the... Balafone? Yeah. No, not on the balafone. On the gym. On the gym. Okay. Was it with the telephone? Uh, yes. Well, actually, we did the telephone and then the eight or the four forty. Do you guys uh, have any opinions to that on that? Who liked the four forty better? If I was taking this class, I would have probably spent six hours working on this to learn it. I myself have probably spent five hours. Yes. Can you really go over the different uh, compressors that they have? Uh, yeah, there's a red one, a blue one, a couple of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a pretty green one. Pretty green one. Green one. No, there isn't a green one. No green one. I. Uh, this is where I've been able to get to, is that this is the 1176 model, right? Which has a fast knee, hard knee on it. Oh, it kind of permanently built it. has a hard knee. Where does it say what box it is? It doesn't. You have to go Google search it. Well, they can't, they can't tell. No, they're actually not allowed. They legally can't tell. Oh, they can't. It's just a graphic. Wait, what? Yeah. Because I think I've. This is what I'm finding is that all of them add a lot of high frequency information. Except for the red one is pretty dark. And this no this and this one's not too bad. This is modeled after the DVX. This one you don't have an attack. Like I said, this one's variable has a variable attack on it. The, high, the harder you hit it, the faster the attack. Seems kind of intuitive actually. Uh, I actually find their platinum one to sound pretty bright. Like it brightens the sound. So I end up not using it a lot. It feels a little harsh. So these ones are obviously probably putting some distortion on it that's softening it a little bit. Uh, this one, this one's a little bit brighter. This one's quite a bit brighter, uh, and I've been trying to use this one. This is the LA two A model. That's really bright. So when I'm working with these uh, uh, percussive sounds that are already bright, that's why I ended up on that one, kind of trying to mimic using the the red one here because it seems to be one of the darker ones. Yep. Get that back. 
to where it was. Okay, let's go over and talk about it. Anyone have any um, other things that they noticed in this mix that they're working with? Bob? Yeah. There, uh, in the segment, there's two solos, right? There was like a, a marimba looking solo okay. interfering with the, the djembe. Yes. How did you mix that? Yeah, some of that's Draman, right? Yeah. And some of it's the style. The African music <clears throat> is like, okay, we're going to have 10 things going on at once. And you're not going to know where you are or what's happening. Uh, some of it's German. He plays a lot of notes, really loud, really fast for a really long time. So, uh, from a that that sort of an arrangement, <coughs> I would say mainly, um, I decided to just leave both in there. And so, <clears throat> what I did. So I used the the. <laughs> sorry, I Nathan did. I used this ribbon mic on the second take, and then in the first one I went in and I tried to make the ribbon sound as much like, or the condenser sound as much like a ribbon as I could, and that ended up with me being, let's see, bound for one. I have an attack time of three milliseconds, release time of 57, and a pretty low threshold there. So it's hitting, it's not hitting anything because that's the wrong one. Here it is. Oh, I had a 6.5 millisecond attack. Oh, I put a limiter on it quite a bit too. So the limiter will also cap off the attack portion as well. Okay, so the limiter doesn't have an, a, a, an attack period. It doesn't wait, so it starts clamping down right away. So I actually use the limiter quite a bit on that one too. No, the limiter, that's, it's, it's, there's no ratio involved. It just says you can't go beyond this. Yes. And it, once it does, it's, it's, it's just chopped right, off. Right, right. So, as he's playing loud and soft notes, it's a problem because you want his dynamic range to come through. The attack, the, the, the compressor is allowing that dynamic range a little bit more in the attack portion, right? So I want that limiter to not be coming on all the time, all the time, but on the louder notes. So I was trying to set it so that it, it's not coming on all the time. It's blinking. You see that? It is. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Oh, why would you use the limiter? To, or like, when would you use it? Uh, okay, so that's a really good question. And it's just something I've gotten good at using recently. So, I think of the compressor as almost a synthesizer. It's synthesizing the envelope. I'm changing the envelope by allowing some of the sound to come through, clamping it down a certain amount, letting go a certain speed, right? I'm reshaping the transient. Uh, the relationship between the transient and the um, sustained part and the sustained part, right? The attack or the limiter will just hack off the loudest part, which is the envelope. So if I want to bring down the relationship between the attack and the sustain, and I just want to clamp that down, I can do it. Uh, so probably in this case, which I'm looking at is where I do that at, I'm actually using the limiter quite a bit. Using the limiter quite a bit, which has an attack time of zero. But I still liked the idea of having the envelope have a little bit of being to it there, so I'm kind of reshaping it here. I probably could probably could get away with this. Of course, now where am I? Oh, I jumped to another. It's not easy to play that fast, by the way. Sorry. As you guys probably experienced, there's a lot of stuff going on in this song. I probably could have gone away with just this. To kill the attack. And probably even left. No, hang on here. No, I guess I have. I guess you have to have some. Oh, here, wait, wait. There we go. I could have probably just done that. So the, I have the ratio of one to one, so the compressor isn't doing anything. And I'm just using the limiter. And in fact, that does sound pretty good. If I was killing the attack, whereas if I turn it off,
So probably all that time messing with the compressor wasn't needed. So probably could have just done that. Probably should have just done that. Is a, a limiter ever used with the purpose of protecting the speakers and other equipment? So yeah, when you have the a certain the, level, or never ever the adaptive it. limiter at the end. Or use other uh, uh, equipment for that. That's what the adaptive limiter is. Okay, That's exactly what it is. Yep. Exactly what it is. So yeah, I would just use a limiter on this, which is what we're doing when we're moving this compressor down. We're getting down towards zero. You know, our three milliseconds. That's getting to a limiting point. So it looks like when I was using my ears, I was ending up some combination of a limiter and some of that to kind of mimic the sound that I wanted. Other questions? All right, let's. Uh, is this helpful? It's pretty in depth stuff we're doing at this point, right? Pretty in depth. And. <coughs> I'm going to have these up here. You can download them. You can play with my uh, versions, but you're going to learn to hear this stuff by doing the AB, right? AB. Let me, whoop, three milliseconds, zero milliseconds, three milliseconds. Ooh. You know, and your ear will start to develop. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, similar, similar model here. If we go to the end song, I'll share a couple more things I was doing. There's two djembe's playing. They're the same djembe, which I should have stepped in and said, why don't you play the other djembe for the accompaniment part? Okay? So we end up with a... Uh... Oh, before I jump to that, we had the two different uh, djembe's, right? We had the the 440 and the Telefunken. Anyone have any thoughts on those two? What do we know about the 440 and the Telefunken that we could probably predict before we even started playing this? 440 will help with the, with the pluckiness of the transient. The 440 will soften up that transient quite a bit, right? And have less high frequency. What do you think we want on a djembe? That was my thought too. Yep. You didn't like it then. I ended up with the condenser uh, uh, because I ended up wanting. I'm like, there's always when I ever hear a recorded djembe, it's always too much transient, and then I feel like after this project, it's like, yep. <laughs> what do you want? That's what that, that instrument's all about: transient and not much else. Not much else. Probably more than almost any other instrument, like a, maybe a wood block or something like that. Or, uh, there's almost no sustain to it, really. Uh, so it has this really sharp cutting sound, and I couldn't find a way to make it sound better and to let that through. So here's here's where I ended up. I ended up with a I uh, did a phase. You can see I have a phase um, inverter. inverter going on here. Nigel, did you need me to go over that again? Which one? How to do phase? Yes. Anyone else need to see how to do phase? Okay. Tell me what to do. I got these two mics going here. These two mics going here. Step one, Lizette, would be? Here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you want? How about this one right here? Correlation meter. Where is it under? Uh, metering. It only shows up when you press on. Does it do it like? You need a stereo you track. You need a stereo track because that's what we're looking at. Stereo. Okay, so second step, Ronnie. Do you remember? Do you remember? Most of the room is you turn the play the track and then. There we go. Good. So pan one left, pan one right, hit play. Are these in phase or not? That's about as bad out of phase as one could possibly get. I was shocked. Which means when you flip one, what? It's going to be a really good phase. Well, isn't that handy? 
Okay, so if these were running together, let's listen to them out of phase. It's gone. Versus. It's not normally that obvious. Now, I it's so extreme that I suspect your teacher probably went in here. And let's see if I... No, that is how it was. It was that out of phase. So this one, I didn't even have to line up the waveforms because it was so badly out of phase. It was great. May your phase always be that bad. Because it's really easy to fix with that button right there. Does yes. it matter on which um, put the gain on? No, you could flip either one. You could flip either one. Yeah. That's amazing how fast his hands move, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what is that? Yeah. He's a lot of fun. He and I spend quite a bit of time together. So. Okay, so... Uh, Mike A? Mike B? Mike A. Mike B. Hard to hear, right? Let me find a, a shorter thing to loop. It's funny in here because when I'm at home, it's so much so much easier to hear. Uh, let's do this little section right here. And every day you have like one of the best drummers in the world sitting there recording with you. Okay, here we go. Mike A. Mike B. Mike A. Mike B. Raise your hand if you can hear a difference. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking maybe just because you guys are in front of the speakers, you could hear. Let me if I could loop a short second. I just find a place where he's playing a lot of that. God. Okay. Mike A. Mike B. B, A, here. Now I can A, B, can you really hear the difference in those? Still that hard out there? I can hear just probably only because I can see it though. Is uh, B a little bit brighter? What's that? Is B a little bit brighter? One was a little bit brighter. The condenser is a little bit brighter. So I found that I was used. I used. Uh, I actually like both of them, and I had some balance somewhere around here, uh, like that, and I ended up with. And then I used a little bit of that limiter to soften the heart, the highest part. But then I also have a little bit of compression on this. See if we can hear this difference here. I'm going to bring the ratio down to zero. It's getting louder, but there's. I like just a little bit on there, but you'll notice how little compression I'm actually putting on that signal, right? Compared to some of the other things that we've been doing, just a little bit on that without the uh, compressor. A little brighter, right? None. Compression. A little clickier. 
So I was going for that clicky sound. Okay, that's the clicky sound I think. I had that, and then I was running into problems with the this one. The hell? It's the same drum, right? Yeah. I'm really getting confused. So this was a pretty big uh, issue. Well, I just did some of the same things we've already talked about. I went into this one. And I set a really short compression uh, compression or attack time on it and put a lot of compression. What does it sound like when you hear that now? You hear a lot of the room. Why would I want to hear lots of room? What is that going to do? Farther away. Got it? So now that one, speaking of placement, I'm trying to make it sound behind. There they are together in the same space. There's one like back there a little bit. That's what I was trying to do. I might even uh, put a little more limit on it. But now this one sounds quite a bit different than this one. Considering they started out much closer to you. So I was using the compression there not just to try to clamp down on the transient, but to bring out the ringing sound of the drum and the room side of the drum so it sounded different than yours. Done yet? Should we take a break? Will you guys all fall asleep on me? Go before Preston wakes up. Do you want me to keep going on this? Should we keep doing this? Yeah. A little bit more? Okay. So, uh, there's a way to pause this recording. <laughs>